Hello, in this video I'm going to go over one more kinematic quantity, acceleration. This is video number 9. So, you probably have an idea of what acceleration means. You're in your car and you're speeding up, and so you think of that as an acceleration. But if you are in, if you tell somebody, okay, my car is awesome, I go from 0 to 60 miles an hour. Are you telling them anything about your acceleration? Not really. Is that, a, is that a nice car or not really? Well, how long did it take to speed up from 0 to 60 miles an hour? Did it take 3 seconds or did it take 10 seconds? You see that the amount of time that it takes to speed up or to slow down really makes a difference in how good of an acceleration that you have. So, acceleration is defined as the rate at which velocity changes. How long does it take for your velocity to change? So we have your average acceleration, notice, um, notated with the bar on top of A here for average, is delta V over delta T, where once again we are just using T for delta T because the initial time is zero. The units for acceleration is meters per second squared. This comes from doing meters per second divided by seconds, where you can multiply by the reciprocal when you divide by seconds here. And you can see this gives you meters per second squared. But I like to think of this unit as meters per second per second. How many meters per second do you change every second? Just another way to remember the definition here. Acceleration is a vector. You notice that it's the rate at which velocity changes, not the rate at which speed changes. So this means that since velocity has a magnitude and direction, that your acceleration can be a change in either your speed you can speed up or slow down, or you can change your direction, or you can do both, and that is still an acceleration. If you remember video number six, the moving man video, where I showed you with the applet that the moving man was moving to the right, for example, he had some acceleration to the left, and as he was traveling this way, he was traveling this way, he actually ended up slowing down and then stopping and then moving back in the other direction. But while he was stopped here, he was changing directions, and he still had that acceleration. So let's do an example for average acceleration here. So it says, a world's land speed record was set by Colonel John P. Stapp when in March 1954 he rode a rocket propelled sled that moved along a track at 1020 kilometers per hour. He and the sled were brought to a stop in 1.4 seconds. What average acceleration did he experience while stopping? And you can see this is him in this picture that you can see this really took a toll on him. This very quick stop, but he had a special suit that helped him handle, his, helped his body handle this very large acceleration. So let's go ahead and write down our givens here. We're given that he has a speed of 1020 kilometers per hour. And then he was brought to stop. The time is 1.4 seconds. Now a lot of times when you do a problem like this, this is all that you're going to write down and then you're going to figure out what you're looking for, the average acceleration. You're going to write down a relevant equation, which is the one that we just talked about, that your acceleration is your change in velocity over time. And then you're going to realize, wait a second, I don't have enough information here. I need a VF and V initial. So then you go back and look at the problem and say, okay, well this right here, this 1020, this was actually his initial velocity. So let me put a, a zero here. And then he was brought to a stop. That's a key word here. Stop or rest means velocity is zero. That means the final velocity was zero. And now all of a sudden, you do have everything that you need. Now I do need to erase this equation for a second because it's in the way here. This initial velocity is not in the correct units. The correct units is meters per second. So here we do have to do a conversion. So let's convert the kilometers to meters. The conversion factor is that you have 1,000 meters in one kilometer. So you're going to multiply that. The kilometers will cancel out. And then you also need to convert hours to seconds. And don't make the mistakes of, of saying there's 60 seconds in an hour. There's actually 3,600 seconds in an hour because there's 60 minutes 
and each minute has 60 seconds. So now the hours cross out, do 1,020 times 1,000 divided by 3,600, and you'll get about 283 meters per second. Now don't round until you get to your final answer. I have to round here on the paper, but it's actually 283.33333. So now we can use our equation for the average acceleration, and we can plug in our numbers to find the average acceleration. So we're going to plug in 0 minus 283 divided by, and this is also in meters per second, divided by 1.4 seconds, and we'll get an answer in meters per second squared. It's going to be negative 202.4, but I'll just round it to negative 202 meters per second squared. So in this case, it was a negative acceleration because we slowed down and we initially considered his initial velocity to be positive, which was to the right. So that's why slowing down has to be a negative acceleration. So I want to spend a little bit of time focusing on how do we know if we're speeding up or slowing down. I did mention this in video 6 with the Moving Man applet, so feel free to take a look. But Really, all you have to do is compare the direction of the acceleration to the direction of motion. If the acceleration has the same sign as the velocity, the object is speeding up. So over here, V and A are in the same direction, that means speeding up. If the acceleration has the opposite sign as the velocity, the object is slowing down. Velocity is to the right, but acceleration is to the left. This means the car is slowing down. In the third figure here, Velocities to the left, accelerations to the right, car slowing down. Fourth figure, both V and A are to the left, that means the car is speeding up. So go back to the moving wind applet video 6 if this doesn't make too much sense, but this is just to remind you that you really have to look at both the V and the A to know if you're speeding up or slowing down. You can't just look at an A, for example, over here in the fourth figure, say, oh, A is negative, that means you're slowing down. That's not the case. In this fourth case you're actually speeding up. And then another note here is that a negative acceleration does not mean a deceleration. When we talk about acceleration in physics, it can mean speeding up or slowing down. And a negative acceleration, again, has nothing to do with speeding up or slowing down. So in everyday language, a deceleration does mean slowing down. But a negative acceleration in physics can mean speeding up or slowing down. So I'd like to conclude this video. I have two your turn questions. So hopefully you'll find them pretty easy because they're reviewing what we just talked about. The first one here says a car is initially moving in reverse. The driver applies the brakes slowing the car. So the key word here is that you're slowing the car. What's the direction of the car's acceleration? And we're using positive to the right and negative to the left as usual. Well, it says that the velocity was in reverse. So if you're slowing down, remember what we learned about acceleration. It means that acceleration has to be in the opposite direction, so that means acceleration is actually in a positive x direction. The last your turn question here actually has two parts. The first part says, can an object have a zero acceleration and a non-zero velocity? So let's think about this zero acceleration that means you're not speeding up or slowing down or changing directions. A0, non-zero velocity. Well, let's say you have a velocity of 5 meters per second to the right. That just means you're traveling to the right at a constant velocity. There's no acceleration. That is perfectly okay. You can definitely do that. What about the second question? Can an object have a zero instantaneous velocity? I specified instantaneous to just mean can you have a zero velocity at any instant of time? And at that time, while you are stopped, you have zero velocity, you have a non-zero acceleration. So this one's a little bit harder, but the best way to think about it is to remember the moving man applets, video six. I had the moving man move to the right, his acceleration was negative, and remember he was walking, 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 slow down, stopped, and then moved back in the opposite direction. 
when he was stopped here, he still had this acceleration. So you can definitely be stopped and have an acceleration. The acceleration causes your change in direction. So the answer is again, yes. I also have a picture of a person on a trampoline, just another example for number two here, that at this instant, when he's on the trampoline, he or she, then the, the, the trampoline is pushing him or her back up and so he or she is going to experience an acceleration upward but at that particular moment that person is stopped. So just to review we talked about acceleration in this video. Think of it as how quickly your velocity is changing and remember that you can have acceleration if you're speeding up slowing down or if you're changing directions.